When the Emperor of Mankind launched the Great Crusade, one of the fundamental aspects about it was the spread of what the Emperor would call the Imperial Truth. The Imperial Truth was focused on the abolition of religion and the superstitious and illogical behaviours that resulted from the adherence to its various creeds and mythologies. Instead, the Emperor would seek to replace all religious institutions with the truth of science, logic and reason to bring humanity into a new and glorious golden age. On each of the worlds that the forces of the Imperium would visit to enact their compliances to bring said worlds into the Emperor's fold, their churches and cathedrals would be torn down and their religious texts burned. Even those who proselytised the worship of the Emperor himself as the god of a new religion born from the Great Crusade would be reprimanded for it. Even the Primarchs, the genetic sons of the Emperor himself, were not above reprisal in this regard, as the Emperor himself would admonish the Primarch Lorgar in front of the entirety of the Word Bearer's Legion for choosing to spread religious worship of the Emperor upon the worlds that the Word Bearers conquered instead of simply making worlds compliant, as detailed within the novel The First Heretic. This is worship. This is a poison to truth. You speak of me as a god, and forge worlds that suffer under the one lie that has brought humanity to the edge of extinction time and time again. The people are deceived. The people will burn when their faith is proven false. It is not my Imperium. But in spite of this galactic purge of religion throughout each of humanity's worlds, one organization and one organization alone was allowed to retain their religious ideologies and practices. The Mechanicum. The Mechanicum was the ancestor organization to both the modern day Adeptus Mechanicus and the traitor forces of the Dark Mechanicum. The Mechanicum, much like the modern day Adeptus Mechanicus, was centered on the Cult Mechanicus, which dictates the worship of an entity known as the Deus Mechanicus, or Machine God. According to the Cult Mechanicus, the Machine God has a physical manifestation known as the Omnissiah, and exists as part of a Holy Trinity, alongside a concept known as the Motive Force. Within the 41st millennium, the Cult Mechanicus is the only other religion aside from the Imperial Cult that is allowed to exist within the Imperium. However, unlike the modern day Adeptus Mechanicus, the Mechanicum was not part of the Imperium per se, but instead it was a separate autonomous political and socio-economic entity that was simply allied to the Imperium, with its own customs, religion and even worlds claimed in their name. It was only integrated fully into the Imperium itself following the events of the Horus Heresy, with those members of the Mechanicum who allied with the Traitor Legions splitting off and forming the Dark Mechanicum. So why were the Mechanicum allowed to retain their religious beliefs when all other types of religious ideologies throughout the galaxy were purged? When the Emperor launched his Great Crusade following the Terran Unification Wars, the first world the Emperor would visit would be the world of Mars, the homeworld and capital of the Mechanicum Empire. The Mechanicum had raided Terra during the Age of Strife for lost technologies and frequently came into conflict against the techno-barbarian hordes. But the Emperor had come to realise that in order for the Great Crusade to succeed, the Mechanicum Empire and the Imperium would need to assist one another. The Emperor needed the production facilities and technology of the Mechanicum, and the Mechanicum would need access to the species of abhuman known as Navigators, which the Imperium possessed in great quantity, in order to travel safely through the stars. The Emperor would set foot upon Mars and demonstrate his power over machines, including repairing a damaged Mechanicum walker with just a touch and this in turn would lead to many believing that the Emperor was in fact the Omnissiah, 
or the avatar of the machine god due to these certain events having seemingly been foretold within the text known as the coming of the Omnissiah. Behold the coming of the one supreme master of machines. He comes to you from heaven in the drops of rain. Sons of Mars, listen well, for one will come, mighty and strong, holding the scepter of power in his hand. Clothed in light and fire, his mouth shall utter eternal words, while his mind shall be a fountain of knowledge and fact. When the Saviour shall appear, ye shall see him as he is, a man like ourselves, yet greater by far. This will be the first step in the greatest endeavour of man. It shall begin on the highest peak of the dominion of Ares. When Demos and Phobos are at Apogee and Perigee, there thou shalt see the face of the Omnissiah. Clad in a body of gold, and wreathed in the firmament of the storm, the Lord of all machines will stand in the midst of his people, and shall reign over all the dominion of man. Great shall be the glory of his presence, that the sun shall hide his face in shame. For verily I say unto you, that he shall be the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the master of flesh and the forger of metal. He shall be a light that shineth in darkness, and a banisher of ignorance. He shall be the object of devotion and love, which kings might envy and emperors sigh for in vain. He shall desire the good of Ares's realm and the happiness of man. All must become one in loyalty and see all men as brothers. Ruinous wars shall pass away and peace shall reign among the stars. Strife and bloodshed and discord will cease. All men shall be as one kindred. The divisions of the stars shall all be one. A treaty was quickly formed between the two empires known as the Treaty of Olympus. This treaty would ensure that the Mechanicum would supply the Emperor's forces with weapons, ammunition, ships and other forms of tools and technology to aid in the Master of Mankind's reconquest of the stars. In exchange, the Emperor allowed the Mechanicum to retain a degree of autonomy and sovereignty which the Skitari protector known as Romu-31 would explain to the psyker Dahlia Scythera within the novel Mechanicum. The Emperor advances the greed of the belief in gods is a falsehood, but a condition of the Treaty of Olympus was that he swore not to interfere with our structures and society when Mars and Terra were joined. So ultimately, the reason behind the Emperor allowing the Mechanicum to continue their religious beliefs was purely and simply that he needed the Mechanicum. The Mechanicum had access to not only vast forges for production, but also had some of the greatest scientific minds and engineering experts within all of humanity. So why didn't the Emperor simply conquer Mars by force of arms and subjugate the Mechanicum into his Imperium? This is most likely due to the fact that the Mechanicum had an incredibly powerful military force upon the surface of Mars, which not only included the Legione Scitari, but also the Battle Automata of the Legio Cybernetica, and even the colossal war machines of the Titan Legions of Mars, which early on in the Great Crusade may have been simply able to utterly destroy the Emperor's own forces due to their sheer firepower. Thus, while the Emperor may have loathed to admit it, he simply could not afford a war with such a technological powerhouse, and as a result, allowed the Mechanicum a degree of autonomy whilst being supplied all that he needed to further the Great Crusade. Despite retaining the cult Mechanicus, it seems that the Imperial Truth had begun to spread to certain members within the Mechanicum itself, and some, such as the Tech Priestess Coriel Zeth, had either turned their back on the very concept of the Machine God and the Omnissiah, or simply never followed the tenets of the Cult Mechanicus closely to begin with. There is no Machine God. Technology is science and reason, not superstition and blind faith. It's what I've always believed. 
and it's what I still believe. Now if you're not going to kill me, get out of my forge. Ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, considering that following the Horus heresy, religion arose again to envelop the Imperium within a stranglehold of faith and superstition, the cult Mechanicus, even if it was forbidden, could have simply arose once again in one form or another. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.